Alright, so I'm making a wire to plug into the battery. This uh, boy here, this bad boy. I got these here. I'm going to do that. Put that there. Put another clamp on there. Okay, this is the kind of stuff that I just hate. So, I bought this battery, I look at the plug, I go, okay, it's that plug. I've seen that plug, I've used that plug. I go buy that plug. Then I put the plug together, obviously, all oh, that's done, good, nice. Then it won't plug in. Then I look at my packages and I find this. Okay, this exact same freaking plug, just a different freaking manufacturer, okay? So they're just a little bit different in there, but when you get into the, the, um, the whatchamacallit part, uh, oh, this part here, look at that, the one I bought versus the one they sent me late, so it didn't show up with a battery, <laughs> but look at that, the difference. This, the, the one they sent is just totally different. It won't match up. So I get to put that, do a whole other freaking cable, and I, um, yeah, this is just a wasted total thing. And it's like, you know, this is the problem with the world. This stupid shit is wasting my time and my money. Like, a resource-based economy doesn't have this priority, blah, proprietary BS. These things are all just the same in a, in a resource-based economy, and you just 3D print them at your house. Super easy. Yeah, and you just, you know, that little metal part, you know, that, that probably just comes in the mail to you or whatever. But, yeah, the bottom line is the fact that there's two of these things that are identical, but they're totally different, totally same gauge and everything. I, it's just stupidity, man. It's just stupidity. All right, I'm making solar power here. 92 volts coming in. My battery's at 43 volts. I don't have uh, any AC stuff. This is the AC side. So there's nothing in there yet. Because I'm working, I'm going to be working backwards from there, from here. And this is all covered up there. But I got a new tool. I got a new tool to put that thing in there. I should have got that from the start. But I didn't think it would even go in at all. So, anyway. 95. It's just hazy and it knocks it back. It was up to 120 or something like that earlier. Oh, well, now there's 100. It's just a little. No, zero. Oh, <laughs> it switched the setting and freaked me out. <laughs> Zero, what the hell? Ah! Yeah. So, yep. I freaked out all morning because I thought something was messed up, but what was messed up was one of those little solar end deals. Where are those? Uh... I have some in here now. Yeah, the, these deals here. I made those myself and I did it wrong. So. Freaked out. Like, ah, oh, because the battery was super low. And yeah. It's slowly coming up, though. Not very fast. It's been at 43 for quite a while. It'll only being at 88. It's probably just trickle charging, basically, at this point. I have a pretty small array, really, for this setup, at this point. If I have all these other solar panels, I need to uh, put up, but that's another project. So I got it all wired up and I had the hot going into there. 
from the from the inverter. And it didn't work. Uh, the power was coming to here, but it was not going to there. So that 200 amp breaker needs uh, some minimum amount, maybe even something pushing on both sides before it'll actually work. So the workaround I came up with was I just uh, backed off that bolt right there and then here's the hot wire right there. <laughs> I grabbed it like it's hot, it's turned off. Uh, so anyway, and then I got 20 amp breakers right here. So that thing is a 50 amp going out, so I can pretty much wire whatever I want into there, and I'm pretty safe. It's not ideal, but it's going to work. Alright, so um, this is pretty much done for this phase. This, uh, this entire bottom here will have a, a wire way big metal box well big, about eight inch metal box that runs along the bottom and all the connections all this wire will be in there none of the zip ties um, the PV comes in through a hole over there there'll be um, strut that runs across that, that houses that um, be a breaker box instead of a fuse this uh, seems to be working pretty good Why? <laughs> that's uh, you know it's the beginnings but yeah I just have 40 amps and I'm not even using one side of that yet I basically just have this one plug and that should do me for now in here I uh, had some issues with the ground rod, so what I did was I cut it off and I rammed in the other part there and then I'll have that wire that goes between them, so I should be fine. I'm going to have to cut that one down a little bit too just to get it into that box. Right, so I don't need to get another one because I wasn't really thinking I was going to do two. They just got impossible to pound. So what I'm going to do is the way that panel is, it has two sides. So when I put the other side in, then I'll just put another grounding situation in for the other side as well. So this will be plenty, um, plenty good. I'm probably going to be like maybe a foot uh minus a foot of uh of the big copper but i'm adding this uh so that'll be a straight run i'm adding that so and there'll be a pad over this so i think i'll be okay um and like i said when i put the other side in i'm gonna put another and i'll probably just put in a plate the grounding plate because these were just a Whew, that was a lot of work just to get it down that far. So the battery, I found it on eBay. And then I um, called them, found their website, called them, and talked to them. And <laughs> the battery is advertised as a 48-volt battery. Even on their website, it says it's a 48-volt battery. Okay, so I call them. I make sure it's the... The Life Po 4, that's fireproof, doesn't burn up. Okay, don't like fire. Uh, yeah, it's that, it's that, you know, it's 48 volts, blah, 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 blah. The guy's English was pretty good, but he wasn't his first language. Um, and so I get the battery and I'm freaking out, like, oh my God, it's at 42 volts. How the fuck it's 42 volts you know i'm freaking out i finally get the thing charging and everything's and i'm like oh it's charging up but then it's charged up and it's like the battery says it's at like 48 volts but the controller says it's at 56 volts and i'm like what's going on and the guys on the forum are like oh yeah and if your multimeter will see even another thing oh okay 
Well, turns out the battery can't go that high. The battery is a 35 volts to 46.8 volts. Not e it doesn't even get up to 48 volts. Ah, so this thing, its range is 40 to 48 volts. So I'm literally, when the battery's, when that thing's gonna be putting the battery at over full, like, and I don't know what the consequences of that are. Is the battery gonna, I mean, it's a, the non-fire battery, so the result won't be a fire, I, I would assume, which is pretty much all I'm trying to avoid. Degradation of the battery, that's gonna suck. So this battery, this big thing here, it's for golf carts. I didn't think it mattered, right? It's a 48 volt battery. Okay, well, it'll work probably. I mean, we'll see what the whole over voltage thing does to it. I just don't know. I, you know, I'll try to have stuff running, basically, hopefully keep it down off that, but that's just, you know, <laughs> it's not, um, sustainable so either it's going to be a problem that it's going up to 48 volts all the time or it's not going to be a problem oh well it's a temporary battery it's just a buy this battery get it it was you know a super affordable comparatively speaking so you know it got me into that 48 volt <laughs> zone like oh i'm almost to 48 volts but anyway I'm currently running off it in solar power. Um, it's a cloudy day. The, the second, the day that I get, the day that it's all hooked up and running, it's of course cloudy out, but it might break. Um, so the battery. Um, the plan is to build a battery. Batteryzilla, 48 cells, 48 volts. So... Um, but that battery's range will be like, I think, 44 to 56. So a totally different range than this battery here. But it's just programmable in there. It's not the end of the world. The only problem is, is that 48. That's the only problem. This will never use this battery's low end. So this battery will pretty much just kind of stay in stasis as far as like the low end, but that, that high end, I don't know, that could be trashing it just as well as undercharging it or over, over discharging it or whatever. I don't know. So, but now I got that battery and I'm hopefully going to have the other battery, you know, within some months i would hope i mean shipping might take months realistically but have the money to buy that battery in within a couple months and then wait for the shipping and then build it oh that's terrifying <laughs> a huge battery in bms and just like all the wiring and the bus bars and the he that is it's going to be an adventure those guys on the DIY solar forum, man, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't even try it. So anyway, back to this battery and what the heck am I going to do with that battery once I, you know, cause it's like this thing is, is barely able to deal with that battery. And we don't even know. I mean, it might just, this whole 48 thing might be an issue, but I, anyway, we are, I've, 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 I think everybody knows that situation, but so this one is for golf carts. Right? It's got a super high amp rating and C rating. So it basically would be perfect for a solar, some sort of solar uh, track, not tractor, a little solar truck for just out on the property, right? So I need to take a load of this over there, I need to run this over there. You know, people have them out here and they're gas powered and they're uh, diesel powered and they're, you know, this 
one neighbor has one. It's like a six wheeler. I see him buzzing around in and another one of my neighbors that's really into gold mining. Um, he has one that looks super fancy, but apparently it's just an inexpensive Chinese one. But it, again, it's gas, right? Now, building with solar panels right on the thing, something that I can cruise around and haul little stuff, you know. You know, if, I mean, if it could move like a wheelbarrow worth of stuff, pff, perfect, right? So anyway, that's what that battery's life will be eventually once I get the real battery, since it's a golf cart battery, and that's what it was made for, but... I mean, literally in the ad, right on the 48-volt battery, says right on the top of the page. Then, which I never did because I just called them <laughs> instead of scrolling down and looking at the battery voltage because I was under this impression that LifePo was LifePo and those battery voltages were just those battery voltages. But apparently not. Apparently, you got to put them together in different ways if you want to run them for a golf cart. Ugh. So anyway, that will be a super fun project. So I, this mess, this pile of stuff. So I got to put in these. So I got two of those. There's another one here someplace. And then these are breakers that go right in line into these things. So I don't have to worry about having breakers. Like that battery has a breaker in it. So I don't have to have this stuff hooked up yet. So, but then once I get those things hooked up, and then I can hook this in, which this turns the 48 volts into 12 volts. That will then power this, and that will power this, and then that's where I'm going to get all my lights from. I might not actually need this, but it looked cool. <laughs> So I ordered a bunch of stuff from this company. Oh, and I got even more bus bars. Man, I went bus bar crazy. And I got switches too. I went switch crazy. I just bought a pack because they were discounted at that price. So I just, you know, these is this is for lights and just whatever I need to have switched on and off. Um, yeah, and these fuses are pretty cool. They just slide down right on to the bus bars. Whatever you clamp on top of that then is is fused. Although, that's this thing here has a fuse. I don't like it. I want breakers because they're a switch. Not, not the greatest switch, but they're a switch. All right, so... I had to put in the midnight uh, 250 solar charge controller so I could put uh, reduce the amount of uh, voltage going into the battery. So now the battery won't ever be overcharged because that goes low enough, right? So there's the the DC now. I I. Uh, I need a bus bar that doesn't have fuses, okay? And then, so I got my 12 volt hooked up. There's the converter, right? There's 12 volts. Everything's running fine, and everything had been running good. This morning, I get up, and it's beeping. This is beeping. Low voltage, but the battery, so it's set at 40 volts. It's supposed to go down to 40 volts, is what I've set it. So the battery was at like 42.5 whatever right the battery goes all the way down to f to 35 so being down to 42 whatever is not a big deal but the beeping was a big deal and i'm like how do i stop the beeping you know everything was still running everything was still working just fine but the beeping <laughs> so i turn the inverter on and off and it won't turn back on it won't turn back on i call the company and now it wants to wait because I turned it on and off, now it has to go all the way up to 46 volts before it turns back on again. 46 volts is like the top of the charge of the battery. And, you know, it's a cloudy day. So, uh, yeah, now I'm just like uh, totally underpaneled for this situation. And I can't get the battery up to charge. So, unfortunately, I had to plug into the fucking truck again. 
which after I don't know how many days of, of just being on this system completely, I haven't had to use the truck at all. And it's been, it's been, a, it's been awesome. I'm just so happy. It's <laughs> even with the hard, the issues and boy, those guys at the DIY forum, some of them just were so pissed off at me for this battery. And these guys, literally, I posted the battery and questions about it before I even bought it. And the one guy, it's like the biggest asshole about the situation, commented on the battery and called it a 48 volt battery, but wants to get all in my shit because I didn't realize the voltage range. And ah, man, like that forum went from like my favorite fucking place to I just close that page and just let those people, I guess I fucking pissed them off. So anyway, it's very sad because they're very helpful people, most of them, but some just kind of get in this whole like, ha, 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 I know the fucking answer. Uh, I'm going to play a game with you to try to get you to guess the, like, what the fuck, man? Do you want me to send you a fucking check? Would that make you feel better? I mean, you know, uh, or should I just call myself an idiot? Like, would that make you feel better to just tell me the fucking answer? <laughs> you know, anyway. I, most of the guys over there are just fucking amazing, smart. But, you know, they probably read my questions like, oh, this guy's a fucking idiot, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm not an electrical engineer. And some of them are. And I got to wonder that, you know, sometimes when you get so fucking smart on a subject, like, the basic questions are super annoying. You know, I was editing, rotoscoping, special effects. And when I started hiring people and training them to edit, you know, just teaching them like the basic shit was so annoying. So, you know, I know, I know I got my, my skill sets, you know, uh, electric, uh, is a lot more useful than editing. It's a real, it's a real job. Editing's a fake job. So much much rather be learning about this stuff than more editing bs but anyway so this is all temporary the way it's set up basically um because the wireway is going to be there and then i need some other you know box that that takes in the the um the the dc voltage right so I don't know if just having that stuff in a wireway is going to make me happy. I might just have it into a, like another breaker box someplace. Maybe even down there somewhere. Not quite sure. But um, just waiting for this thing to charge back up so I could get the 46 volts. And it's a cloudy day. And it says it's 43.6 here. But on the battery it says it's uh, 42.9. And if I turn this on, it would tell me yet another answer. So when it's going to be able to charge all that up, it's already noon and it's cloudy. So this may be all just stuck on the off position. I guess I could wire in the AC charger on this, which I've been kind of avoiding because it was like, I just don't want to cut an extension cord. <laughs> Basically, that's what you do. You cut off your extension cord, you wire the extension cord, and you run it off into the plug, whatever you got to, whatever power source you got, right? Okay, so I've got that truck power source, but I'm trying to get rid of that. So I was uh, basically thinking the solar system was just going to run itself. It was just going to be fine. And as the sun, you know, I'm at solar peak right now. So as the sun starts to r recede, I can just start to put more panels. I'm already planning my more panels now. I've already got the layout. This is a 250 volt, 60 amp charge controller. I can put a lot of freaking panels and I have them. I have a huge stack of panels still that uh, I need to mount. But you know, I got all this kind of stuff going on, but that's how I'm gonna keep the system viable continuing to be viable is just adding more panels so i'll add panels that face east i'll add panels that face west i'll add another couple panels onto the three that i have now and i should be good so peace